Hey guys, welcome to the 25th part in this Python for Beginners series. In this one we're going to be talking about another really fundamental feature to object oriented programming in general, and that is inheritance. So I'm going to show you just right now in Python. So you can see on my screen that I've got the class from the previous video open, and I'm going to be using this in this video. So if you haven't seen how I created that and want to learn how to do that, I did that in the previous video. But in this one, we're going to be talking about how you can inherit properties and methods of a particular class, like this animal class, for example, in what's called a uh, subclass or a child class or, you know, whatever you want to call it. So, let's use this dog as an example. We can create an object like this, which is fine, and that worked for the previous example, but there's a better way of doing this for this particular case because what you can do is create another class. So I'm going to create the class called a dog. So this is going to be a class which is going to be used by every single dog object that we want to create. But re remember, a dog is also an animal. So a dog is going to inherit all the properties of an animal, it's going to be a particular species and it's going to have a name. So how are we going to do this? Well, the way we do this is with the parentheses and I'm just going to take, type in the name of that class. So the dog inherits from the animal class, which is defined up here, and it's basically going to get all these methods for free in this dog class. So even though it looks like we haven't defined anything in the dog class, because it inherits from animal, we've already got access to get name, get species, and all these methods that we've defined up here. In this example, we do have to do some things to initialize the parent class called animal, because it's got this init function, which it requires the name and the species to be entered. So let's go ahead and do that. To do that, we're gonna just create another method, uh, which is an another init method, and in that, we're going to initialize the parent class. So the way we do that is it's going to inherit from self. Sorry, it's not inheriting from self. It's just self is going to be that object that we talked about in the previous video. Uh, whatever the object name is, it's going to replace self when that object is defined. And it's going to take name and it's going to take is big for if the dog is big or not. Just a random, random example. So what we can do now is we have to initialize the animal class because we've required that it has the name and the species entered. So we can just do animal dot init. So what this is doing is calling the animal class and the init fun the init method in that class. So what this is doing is it's calling the so it's the, referring to the animal class, which is defined up here, and then it's saying, okay, look in that class and find the init method. So that's this one. And because it's requiring these uh, parameters being entered, we're just going to enter that here in this init method. So we're using the dog class init method to initialize its parent, okay? So we're just going to say it's name and it's so I'm filling in these two here so it's going to have the name of whatever the dog's name is and it's going to have the species of a dog okay so that's pretty much all we need to do um, there's one more thing which we can do like similar to how we have here because we've got is big as well so I'm going to do self dot is big is equal to is big and that's just going to be true or false, it's going to be a boolean value when we come to create this object. But it really could be anything you want. That's it. So that's all you need to do. Um, you don't even need this init method, to be honest, but it's, it's a good example to be able to show you how you can pass in parameters and values and things like that, because it makes your code much more dy dynamic. So I'm going to go and delete this dog object, just so it doesn't get too confusing, and I'm going to go ahead and save and run this program. So now we've got this all defined, I should be able to go ahead and create my dog object and I'm going to make an instance of the dog class. And all we need to pass in here is going to be the name of the dog, which is going to be uh, 
Rupert, and <laughs> I don't know how, why I come up with these names, but there you go. And it is a big dog, so we're going to say true. So this is the dog class, and yet we see that the print statement from the animal class has been executed because in the init method of the animal class, which means that it must have inherited the methods and in, it does actually inherit the properties as well, which would be sort of the variables you define like age equals seven, for example, um, that's a property. But it does actually inherit all these things from the animal class. Everything that the animal class has, it's going to inherit that in the dog object. So you can do stuff like dog dot get name, just like we did before, but in this case it's now a dog. It's an instance of the dog class, right? So we can do that, and now we get the name of the dog as a dog object, and we can say dog dot is big. And we get true, because it's a big dog, which is great. So in this way, we can not only use the, th the stuff that we've defined in the dog class, so in this case it's really just the is big uh, variable, and we can also use all the stuff in the animal class because it's been inherited. So even though it looks like we haven't really got much in the dog class, what we've actually got is basically we could just put all this stuff there and it's pretty much going to be the same thing. Um, obviously you'd have to change a, lot of the, a bit of the code around to get that to work properly. So in the next one we're going to be talking about some more stuff to do with inheritance and specifically how you can override a method and also how you can inherit from multiple classes rather than just one.